الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه والسراج منيرا My beloved brothers and sisters Today I want to speak about two incidents from the Quran We're in the month of Ramadan, the month of Quran, right? And it's only right that we try to take our inspiration from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Every single one of us here, my brothers and my sisters, every single one of us here wants a better life. Am I wrong to say that? There is that which we try to acquire in this world, sometimes through means that are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At times we look at the Sharia so rough and tough. Why is it preventing me now to enjoy myself? It doesn't make sense. I always say to our brothers and our sisters, why is it that we fail to accept that our minds are limited? We have accepted that what we can see is very limited. Can anyone here see that which is happening in Anfield? They were actually partly to blame for why we were late. There's a Liverpool game today, right? Can anyone see that which is happening in Anfield? No, you can't. Can anyone see that which is happening in Goodison Park? I know guys, I'm not backwards. Nobody can see, nobody can hear that which is happening, what? Outside. Nor can you smell that which is happening outside. If you accepted that these body parts, these senses of yours are all limited, why is it that we fail to accept that our intellects and minds are limited as well in what we can comprehend. Everything, brothers and sisters, happens for a reason. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi have told us, it is in our best interest. Whether you see the wisdom in it or not, Islam is preventing me from enjoying myself. I really want to have a relationship with her. My DMs are full, brothers and sisters. You know what it's full of? Young girls and young men, all heartbroken. I'm spiritually dead and empty, right? Just about every lecture that I've been doing, we've only done a couple because my main priority in the month of Ramadan is to lead Taraweeh and Tahajjud, everything else is secondary. A couple of lectures that we've done. Every lecture, someone came up to me and said, well, I'm in a haram relationship. And you can see the way he looks so depressed and so down. I don't feel good. I keep telling her in the month of Ramadan to go to her father and let's just get married. And she keeps dragging her feet. The people are in a very, very bad state. Is it surprising? Of course not. To me, as someone who receives these messages and has these interactions, this is not surprising. Because I know any maslak, any path that you take, other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed you with, you are bound to end up like that. Depressed, sad, right? You're going to run yourself into problems after problems after problems. Anyways, my brothers and my sisters, going back to the point that I was making, every commandment from the Quran and every prohibition, it is in your best interest, whether you see the positivity or the goodness in it or not. That brings me to these two stories that I want to mention, inshallah ta'ala. There's a lot of young people here. Have you guys heard of Surah Al-Kahf? Chapter of Kahf. What does Kahf mean? Huh? The cave. Sometimes those who slept in the cave are, are referred to as the seven sleepers. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, a little bit about these young men. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us, "Innahum fitiyatun amanu." They were a group of young men who believed, and here Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is giving us this information about them, this description of them being young men, as a way to point out. What wonderful individuals they were. 
at a young age, they believed and they done the right thing. Normally, a lot of young people, let's be honest with ourselves, right? Are they individuals who stand up for their religion? They call to Allah as if they're doing da'wah, they're memorizing the Quran. You will find pockets of young men doing so. But when we look at it, right, from the perspective of a ratio of how many of them are actually doing so, you will see those that are not practicing, especially in today's day and age, in this very sexualized, filthy society. Right? It's far less. Am I correct to say so, my brothers and my sisters? Brothers are nodding their heads. This is the reality of the matter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just mention things out of abath. Right? For no reason. No, innahum fityatun. He could have mentioned rijal, men. As he mentioned in surah what? An-Nur. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to those who go out to pray. Fi biyutin adina Allahu an turfa' wa yudhkara fiha ismuh yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghudu'i wal asal. Allah then said rijal, men. And there's a difference between men and male. It's not going to that discussion, huh? Alpha, male, and none. I'm not talking about that. Men and boys. Men and male. In the Quran, these terms are mentioned. Here Allah Azza wa Jalla is sending us that from the trace of men is that they go and pray in the masjid. To be praying in your house is actually a feminine trait. Because that's what women do. Unless, of course, you have a udr shar'i, you're far away from the masjid, you can't get there, and so on and so forth. Hayya Allah, Ustad Badr. Allah yahfadak. Are you brothers and sisters with me? So, Rijal was mentioned. But in Surah Al Kahf, Allah Azza wa mentions Fityatun, a group of young men who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They came with faith, they came with iman, they came with tawheed, as we will touch on in a moment, inshaAllah ta'ala. They believed in their Lord and Allah Azza wa Jal increased them in guidance. Every single one of us here, my brothers and my sisters, wants to better their lives deep in your hearts. You know if you're doing the wrong thing at this moment in time that you can't continue like this forever. And the month of Ramadan where the scene has been set. The doors of Jannah have been swung open and the doors of hellfire have been slammed shut. We're all crying out for guidance. Look at this verse. And Allah Azza wa increased them in guidance. You need to show Allah Jalla fi ula that you really badly want it. My DMs are also full. You know with what brothers and sisters? People who are saying, I feel like I wasted my Ramadan. I feel like I haven't met my objectives and my goals. This is what some are saying. Some sisters are saying, I'm on my menses. I can't benefit from the last 10. No, my brothers and my sisters. Even let's just say for argument's sake, you wasted all of these nights. You can still walk away with the jackpot of reward. Right? It's not how the race started. It's how the race finishes. You show Allah Azza wa how badly you want it. وَزِدْنَاهُمْ huda. Allah will increase you in guidance. Ibn al-Jawzi says, إِنَّ الْخَيْلَ إِذَا شَارَفَتْ نِهَايَةَ الْمِضْمَارِ بَذَلَتْ قُصَارَ جُهْدِهَا لِتَفُوزِ بِالسِّبَاقِ When the horse reaches the end of the race, what does it do? It exerts all of its efforts to win that race. Look what he then says. فَلَا تَكُنِ الْخَيْلُ أَفْطَنَ مِنْكَ Don't let the horse be more smarter and more intelligent than you. فَإِنَّكِ إِذَا لَمْ تُحْسِنِ الْإِسْتِقْبَالِ لَعَلَّكَ تُحْسِنُ الْوَدَعَ If you didn't do well, welcoming the month of Ramadan, perhaps you'll do better bidding it farewell. Are you brothers and sisters with me? وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَعَ Allah Azza wa Jal will increase you in guidance. And to quickly mention, maybe it's something you guys can relate to. You know, a couple of years ago, 
on the khutbah or in the khutbah on the pulpit. I mentioned a viral video of those who are running on the racing track. Some of you guys may have seen it was on BBC Sports. You guys, Anfield fans, right? You may know, you may not know, Allahu Alam. But in Liverpool, I heard they're crazy when it comes to football. So on the racing track, my brothers, it was on BBC Sport. They're running, running, running. There's one that is winning and the other one is just a little bit behind him. As they reach the finishing line, the one who was in second place, what did he do? He dived. He dived on the racing track. Who dives on a racing track? Are we in a swimming pool? He decided to dive. And guess what? The one who was behind, he ended up winning because he dived. He exerted whatever efforts he has in order to win the race. Right? He really badly wanted anyone. And likewise, my brothers and my sisters, we really badly want something. Allah says, if Allah, He sees that goodness in your heart, He'll give it to you. So going back to Surah Al-Kahf, seven sleepers or these young men who believed in Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa increased them in guidance. These young men, some of the Mufassirin, they mentioned that they came from very wealthy families. They had a lot of money. The upper class of society they were. Annually, they would have a festival where they would come together and start invoking their idols. Right? They would begin to what? Invoke their idols. They would commit a shirk. Associating partners of Allah Azza wa The worst sin that you can fall into, my brothers and sisters, is what? A shirk. Ahsantum. There's nothing more greater than it. If you die upon shirk, there's no way you're coming out of the hellfire. But anything other than that, that is less than shirk, if one died upon it and he had tawheed, he had monotheism, there is a chance that Allah may forgive him. Allah may choose to punish him and he may choose to just completely forgive him. And if Allah decided to throw him into the hellfire, sooner or later he'll be taken out. This is the virtue what? of having faith, Iman, your Tawheed, your Monotism. Are you brothers and with me? So annually they would get together and they would celebrate alongside these idols calling on to them and so on and so forth. Mada hasal ba'd dhalik? These young men, if we just go off with the number seven, right? If we just go off with that, one by one, they left this temple that they were in or this festival that they attended and they walked outside. One leaves, the other leaves, the third and so on and so forth. As they are standing outside, they began to get very paranoid. Why is he outside? Why is the other one outside? Is he an undercover individual who's here now to collect information on me? Perhaps was running through their mind. He's looking at him. One of them was brave enough now to approach the other. And they began to speak and found out that they are all on the same page. They all left that festival because of the discomfort they felt around these idols that they used to invoke besides Allah. Are you provinces with me? So then it began to spread amongst the people, amongst the community, that these young men have now gone against the religion of their forefathers. It eventually reached the king in their time, who the Mufassirun, the scholars of Tafsir mentioned, was a tyrannical, barbaric, bloodthirsty individual. So he called them into his office. Some even mentioned that his name was Decius. Allahu a'lam. 
what his name actually was. Right? What we've not been told in the Quran, we don't really need to dig deep to find out these intricacies. Long story cut short, my brothers and my sisters, they were called by this tyrannical, barbaric, bloodthirsty ruler in their time. And he began to question them. And they stood up to whatever he was saying. And Allah tells us, إِذْ قَامُوا فَقَالُوا رَبُّنَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They stood up to him saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, لَن نَدْعُوَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَهَا We will not invoke, call on to other than Allah Azza wa When we make dua, it will be directly to Allah. Isn't this what the Messiah Allah Azza taught? Ibn Abbas, فَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ when you ask, ask Allah Azza لَقَدْ قُلْنَا إِذَنْ شَطَطَى If that is the case, or if we were to actually now engage in this act of shirk, we would have indeed fallen into something that is extremely grave. So just to recap, you have a group of young men. They embrace faith. They detach themselves from the haram that is taking place. In the story, it talks about shirk, right? We can perhaps draw a comparison to our society. You have filth in every single direction. You go to these universities, you know what I call it? A breeding ground for kufr, shirk, feminism, liberalism, secularism. And of course, you have the rainbow team. Right. The world has become an extremely colorful place. Everything is inviting us. Filth and evil, hate and like, come do haram. It's so easy to fall into it. Am I wrong to say that, guys? Am I speaking about a different galaxy, a different planet? I'm speaking about Liverpool and others. It's a breeding ground for all of these things. These young men, in the midst of the worst possible sin, what do they do? They detach themselves. Sah? And not only that, they began to defend their religion, stand up to the sole purpose of what they were created for. Because your natural disposition, your fitrah, doesn't accept what they are doing. And then it doesn't stop there. In front of the king, they stuck to their beliefs and they were steadfast. So after the back and forth that took place, he gave them an ultimatum to renegate, to leave their religion. Right? Sometimes we may find ourselves in these kind of situations where we are bombarded with information. It may not always be by force, but it is done through the different means and avenues that have been created by the devil through the shayateen al-ins in order to lead you astray, right? A lot of the time, my brothers and my sisters, the shaitan is not going to tell you, look, I'm the devil. This is haram, go and do it. Inni lakuma nasihin. He has a lot of tricks and traps under his sleeve, like what he done to our father Adam. He swore by Allah, I am indeed a sincere advisor. Inni, right? Ta'keed. And then the lamb that is being used here. Lamin al Sincere advisor. Right. He gave them an ultimatum to renegate, to leave their religion. Otherwise, he would chop their heads off. By that time, they had decided to flee with their religion. Fafirru Allah. They chose Allah over the lifestyle that they had. Remember what I said earlier. They came from a wealthy, rich background. They gave all of that up. For what? For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does the story stop there? No. When you leave something for Allah's cause, does Allah abandon you, brothers and sisters? Abadan. 
وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله ها فأووا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا and once you've now or once they isolated themselves from the filth and the evil in their time and whatever those people were doing they headed towards the cave what did Allah Azza do? He showered them with His mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took control of their affairs Allah Azza wa took it into His own hands right. they slept and they didn't wake up except hundreds of years later they wake up we're hungry someone go and grab us some food and be careful that you're not caught not realizing that hundreds of years have gone past right these seven sleepers my brothers and my sisters they became a story that would be related to one another you know how you have bedtime stories those in the past, they would talk about there was these young men and this is what they done and then and nobody knew what the ending was. Subhanallah. And then after they came to the city, the people realized that it's them. And from that point on, they lived a life of izza and karam. Mu'azzazun mukarramun. Allah promised that He would take care of everything. He would take control of their affairs. All of this is after what? They done the right thing. Right? That's what we know about these young men who ran away with their religion. And let me just point out something, right? A disclaimer. Just in case someone misunderstands what I'm saying, am I telling you to run away from your families? Huh? I don't want your dads and your moms to come after me tonight while I'm leading Taraweeh. I'm never instructed that and I never encourage that. We're talking about doing the right thing. Allah has really took care of everything. So my brothers and my sisters, I don't know which haram you're involved in. It could be a haram job. It could be a haram relationship. And you're in between two minds, I don't know, I'm going to lose out on a lot. Right. Allah will take care of everything. I also, my brothers and my sisters, want to mention quickly the story of Ibrahim والسلام, and then draw comparisons between the two. I mentioned Surah Al Kahf. What is the chapter before that? Surah Maryam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places chapters right next to one another. Laysa an abath. It's not just because Allah feels like, no, not like that. There's hikmah behind it. There's wisdom behind why Allah puts every verse where he puts it and the chapters before the others. There's even a science that is studied, right? Tanasub al ayati wa suwar. Even Jaladin al Suyuti has got a kitab on that. I'm not going to be long, my brothers and my sisters. I know you guys want to go watch the... Is it now? What time is the game? Have we got time? We got time, guys. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us about his relationship with his father, was he old or was he young? Huh? Was he old or was he young? Because his father was extremely, extremely unhappy and angry with him. Why though? Because he chose a religion other than the religion that the father was upon. Right? And Ibrahim والسلام, kept on advising his father. Ya abati, ya abati, ya abati, ya abati. How many times is that? Four times. It's mentioned Surah Maryam. Look at how he's speaking to his father, even though his father waqi'un, 
he is immersed in the worst possible sin shirk billah azza wa jalla idol worship imagine that today what tends to happen is we start practicing a little bit or we learn a couple of things here and there from the masjid we come back home and we want to what huh change everybody's lives in 24 hours the eiffel tower wasn't built in 24 hours my brothers and my sisters i always tell the brothers and sisters the hardest type of da'wah is the da'wah to your family it's extremely hard even the messenger saw some struggled didn't he calling his uncle to islam all the way up until his deathbed and even then he didn't accept nuh alayhi salatu wasalam ya bunayr kam ma'ana wa la takun ma'al kam get on the ship don't be from amongst the disbelievers didn't lot alayhi salatu wasalam he had a wife that stabbed him in the back she went with the fruity guys have to be a bit careful in any of the terms that I use. Are you brothers and sisters with me? So Ibrahim Ali Sat was in a very, very gentle, soft manner. Ya abati, ya abati, ya abati. He was thrown into the fire. Right? Qulna ya narukuni barda. Salam al Ibrahim. But it didn't burn him. My brothers and my sisters, to cut this story short, his father threatened him. If you don't stop, I'm going to stone you. Ibrahim made his mind up that it's time to leave. Allah tells us, and this is what I really want you guys to take home. فلما اعتزلهم وما يعبدون من دون الله وهبنا له اسحاق ويعقوب كل جعلنا نبيا when he now detached himself from that haram and that shirk that they were engaging in of invoking other than Allah عز وجل did Allah abandon him he just gave up his father who is so dear to his heart who's more closer to you your father or your girlfriend that you're doing haram with. He gave up his father. Right? The lines were drawn, brothers and sisters. The sides were chosen. My father is going to stone me if I continue holding on to my religion. It's time to leave. فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ وَهَبَنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted him with Ishaq, gave him a son. My favorite hadith, my brothers and my sisters, does anybody know? Some of you guys may have seen online. What's my favorite hadith? You guys don't watch my videos. I feel offended. Huh? What's my favorite hadith? I asked this question in one of the other messages that I've never been to before. There was a brother who put his hand up, he said this. It's like, Ahsant. Huh? He's pointing at you. Wala mushaghib huwa. Huh? Huh? Ahsant. Complete the hadith. Ahsant. My favorite hadith, my brothers and my sisters, is. It was narrated by Imam Ahmed. Innaka lan tada'a shay'an ittiqa'an lillah. You don't leave something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Being conscious of Him, having fear of Allah, except Allah will give you that which is better. You know, up until this very day, I don't know who taught me it. I remember hearing it back in 2011. No, no, sorry, before that, 2009 it was. Before I went to go and seek knowledge in Yemen. I still can't remember because people are saying to me, Akhi, if you take years out to go and study, you're going to fall behind in your studies here in the UK. And then later on, you're going to be studying with little kids. And by that time, all of your friends and your classmates, they would have such wonderful jobs and you'll be some miskeen. 
That's the only hadith I remember at the time that I was still what? Conscious of. Anyways, I don't want to talk about the ins and the outs of my life, my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to quickly tell you guys one story and then we're done. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Zakh al Badr, he always mentions stories in his lectures, no matter what he's teaching, he could be teaching fiqh, hadith, aqidah. If there's a lesson in it, he'll mention so that it can stick to people. So I'm going to tell you guys a story as well. I had a neighbor. His name was Sohil. I met him, I believe it was 2014. Right? I remember he came up to me and he said, because he's an, an accountant. He's an accountant by profession. Is there anything wrong with being an accountant? The asal is that there's nothing wrong with it unless you are engaging in haram. The job that he was working out, the job that he was working at, involved haram. And he came up to me and he said, I know that I'm involved in haram. Right? I didn't feel comfortable, so I left him. And I told him, Allah will never abandon you. And I, this hadith I just shared with you guys. Right. He had a couple of thousands of pounds and he was doubting whether he should use it to go hajj or not. It's very uncertain, right? What's going to happen after that? Very uncertain times. We went on Hajj and we came back. But you know, before that, my brothers and my sisters, his in laws, they were making jokes out of him. I remember him telling me, his in laws were like, What's, Allah, I, I don't know the correct English word to use, so excuse me for using this term. Someone that just sits at home all day long, that doesn't do anything, slouch. Huh? Some people refer to him as a bum. Sahih? If anyone has a better term, please. Uh, Give it to me. Huh. Introvert? No, no, no. We have a Sheikh, you're an English teacher. Share some words with us. Huh? You got like a term for it? Huh? No, everyone got what I'm trying to say, right? When you're not working, people look at you, this guy is always at home. What's wrong with him? Get up and do something with your life, even though he had actually what left it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And I remember when going to his house, he felt pretty sad. And, you know. Keep in mind the hadith. Huh? We come back from Hajj after he's used whatever money that he had. The Hajj package was around three thousand something. He had some pocket money. He was using everything that he had for Hajj. Yarja comes now as soon as he arrives he receives an email you know what this email was pack your bags and go to Mecca to teach English you know my brothers and my sisters most people that I know are either teaching English in Riyadh somewhere fortunate to be in Al-Medina or they are in Jeddah I've never come across in the 14 years that I've been going around the Middle East to study and whatever have you, someone teaching English in Mecca. Never. Other than this brother. And you know what I put it down to? Him leaving it for the sake of Allah Azza wa And at the time when he was working, Wallah, he had the most chilling job ever. He was employed by one of the richest guys in Mecca to teach the children of the family. These children would only turn up sometimes once every two weeks. They didn't want to come to class. So he would just go, haram back, haram back, haram back, picking up his wage, both him and his wife. They both had wages, and over there, there was no tax. Here we work for the government, right? A big percentage goes to Mr. Sunak. Sah? Allah al my brothers and my sisters, 
I kid you not, he comes back a couple of years later and he buys the biggest house on the strip. Like all the houses on the street that we lived on, they all look the same. But his one stands out. It was on the housing association, came back and paid it out with the money that he was saving up. La riba, no loan, no interest, no haram, nothing. And I put this down to my brothers and my sisters, him leaving something for the sake of Allah. Azzawajal. And I have no doubt, my brothers and sisters, that if you were to do the same, please do share your success story with me when you email it to me, inshallah ta'ala. Countless of people, I can sit here till tomorrow, talk about stories after stories after stories after stories. Shall I tell you guys one more? Are you guys tired? Huh? One more. No, no, one. One. Don't push it. I can see some of our brothers there having there. One more story. This is another brother from Leicester. Have you guys heard of Coffin Warehouse? Coffin Warehouse? Do you guys have this in Liverpool? Say, It's the phone shop that sells phones. Huh? Huh? Ya Rajul. Coffin Warehouse. Coffin Warehouse is a phone dealer. Franchises, branches across the country. Sah? There was a brother. His name was Najib. He was working in the call center of Kaffan Warehouse for many years. Perfectly halal, no issues. One day they came to him and they said, from now on you guys have to start selling insurance. The brother came up to me and of course I told him the Islamic ruling. But I never pushed him to do anything. And I told him the hadith as well. He said that I've gone to the supervisor and explained that I don't feel comfortable selling this. The supervisor promised to find him a way out. He will try his utmost best and he'll get back to him in a couple of days' time. Eventually, he couldn't do anything. Also, the brother just got married. Huh? Bushra wants to be taken to ice cream parlors. She wants a nice bag. She wants this, she wants that. It's still early days of your marriage. It's not like 10 years, huh? Khalas, you got tired of her. That shouldn't be the case, by the way, huh? Manda Hassan, what happened? He made the decision to leave. Right? After hearing the hadith, he made the decision to leave. Wallahi, I would see the brother at door time, making one of those sincere duas, him sitting in the masjid. We were literally neighbors, praying in the same masjid at door time. And then I would speak to him after the Salat, ask him, how are things going? Mada Hassan? He said, I'm getting interviews, but I still haven't found the right one. Bear in mind also, every morning he would travel for half an hour plus and half an hour back. It adds up, brothers and sisters. You know, the petrol cost, it eventually adds up. You guys with me? It eventually adds up. And he was only on something like 18,000 pounds a year. Huh? After some time, brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa blessed him with a job 12 minutes from his house, British gas. Not only is he now saving more money, right, monthly because of the petrol costs, but before he was 18,000, right? Now it was something like 22, 23,000 that he was making throughout the year. You don't leave something for the sake of Allah, except Allah will always give it out, which is better. Closing words, my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to quickly mention, how can we increase ourselves in doing the right thing? 
Brothers and sisters, would you guys agree that we respect people in society because of what we know about them? Sah? There are certain people that we look up to, that we respect, that we hold in high regard. Why? Because of what we know about them. Sah? I'm sure you brothers have role models. These YouTubers, huh? This guy is successful. He's got all of this money. He's got a lot of views, a lot of subscribers. We look at him differently to everyone else because of what we know about them, sah? Isn't it so? I'm sure the sisters, they have people as well. Why is it when these people say something, we listen? But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something, it falls on deaf ears? Or it's just like some random individual saying something? I'm going to tell you guys, because we don't know anything about Allah subhanahu We have no idea of who Allah Azza wa is. The only source of knowledge that we have of Allah are what? His names and His attributes. Go through His names. Who from amongst us has gone through the names of Allah? al samiya Al-Rahman, Al-Basir, Al-Latif. But if I asked you about the Liverpool X1 first team, you can tell me all of them and the one that's on the bench and injured as well. Sah? Some of you guys know who's playing tonight, huh? Am I wrong to say that? You're laughing. Sahih? Most of your friends, they know, right? And if we see them on the road, Stephen Gerrard, huh? He's in Saudi now, right? Some of these uh, Liverpool players, we go crazy because of achievements and whatever they've accomplished. But when it comes to Allah, brothers and sisters, it falls on their face. لا نعرف عنه شيء. So how do we expect to activate our hearts or for us to be moved when we hear something about Allah Azza wa It's not going to happen. من أحب لقاء الله أحب الله لقاءه. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whoever doesn't love to meet Allah, doesn't want to meet him. How can we increase? Right? That desire of wanting to meet Allah Azza wa and to get activated upon hearing His commandments. Learn about who Allah Azza wa is. When you internalize that Allah is a Sami'a, He's Al Basir, Al Raqib, He can see every little thing that you're doing, every step that you take, every move that you make. You know, once upon a time, if we wanted to access haram, we had those big computers, right? You know the Dell big computers with the big backs? The keyboard? And if you wanted to engage with the opposite gender, you have the webcam that you have to use. Some of you guys are probably too young to know. You don't know, right? MSN and MySpace. No, it's fine. Don't worry. And you're watching the door so that you don't get caught. You hear huh? a little shh. You want to flip the keyboard. Today, under the blanket, with these devices, accessing haram has become so, so easy. Fingertip away. Right? It's times like that when it comes in extremely handy. Perhaps now it's falling into place. The importance of learning your aqidah and how it's in connection with the sins that you fall into. And these names of Allah, my brother, is the only source of knowledge that we have about who Allah Azza wa is. Sah. Right. I'll give you guys an example that Ibn Rajah mentions. A man, a Bedouin man, ran into a woman in the middle of the desert. Nobody was there. And he began to what? Seduce her. Somali say, Shukan Sah. Huh? And she started getting very scared. His response was, Mimma takhafi. What are you scared of? La yarana ila al kawakib. The only thing that can see us is the stars. That was his response. La yarana ila al kawakib. You know what the response was? 
Look how she was a woman that understood Allah. Where's the one that brought the stars into existence? Where's the creator of these stars? The impact end up drilling into his heart and then he withheld from doing haram with her. That is the impact. The names of Allah internalizing will have on you. And then it's going to prevent you from these sins that you fall into. Also Allah says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَ تَلَعِيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ Allah knows the deceptive eye and what you can see in your hearts. When you are about to strike that deal, huh? you're about to close that transaction, and you've written things in small that the buyer cannot see, deceiving him, just so you can make a little bit more money. You think Allah Azza doesn't see that? And that Allah Azza wa Jal will deal with you accordingly. All of this, my brothers and my sisters, right? It comes from you learning about what Allah Azza wa is. You know, sometimes I, I, I think about these drug dealers and these guys who run around beating people up. Do you not know and Allah Azza wa Jal says, mink, yani. That Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will hunt you down. Allah Azza may choose, may choose if He wishes, to deal with you in this world before the hereafter. That's from his sifat and yantaqim. Not from his asma. We don't say he's muntaqim ala al itlaq. La. It's something that Allah Azza wa Jal can do to you. If you do it, right? He will avenge. You've broken someone's legs. That can't happen to you tomorrow. I've seen brothers, they would say, these are drug dealers, right? Guys on the road. Just go and stab him in the knee. Just teach him a lesson. Right? Yeah, the guy who you're stabbing is going to say to you, come take my knees and stab it, right? That's what he's going to say to you. And the thing spiral out of control. Eventually he finds himself, that guy who's giving out these commands in a wheelchair, crippled. You're causing all of these problems and this oppression and you think you're going to get away with it. This is a person, ma araf Allah. Inna Allah la yumli li dhalimi hatta idha akhadhu lam yuflitah. Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi told us, Allah Azza wa Jal, again we're learning about who Allah is and what He does. The one who's oppressing others, He will give him respite. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep it. And then when Allah decides to grab you, He will take you. ثم تلا قوله تأنني رد وكذلك أخذ ربك إذا أخذ القرى وهي ظالمة إن أخذه لي مشرى. Indeed, him taking you is extremely painful. Doesn't that like really affect us now? The more we learn about Allah Azza wa Jal, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to benefit us from what we had. To make us from those that when they hear the reminder, they act upon it.